Hi, my name is Marshall, and this is Waveform. Is there a right way to design a sound effect? Imagine this, it's a crisp Monday morning in the summer of 2015, and you've just been hired as a sound designer at Ubisoft Games. Your boss says to you, Hey new guy, we need you to make some ambient computer sounds for this big server room we got in Watch Dogs 2. Make it futuristic and cool. How'd you begin? What kind of sounds would you look for? How would you know when to stop tweaking and move on to the next assignment? Well, we've talked about designing sci-fi weapons, punch sounds, robot voices, and much more on this show, but we've never talked about the macro approach. How to actually create a sound from scratch, and what creative methods can produce good work, while also avoiding getting stuck in a rut where we design the same way every time. My method for making sounds is constantly changing, which I think is a good thing. But I want to show you how I've been doing things lately, because it's true that method is sometimes even more important than technique. So let's do it. Let's pretend we're this guy, and let's get to work on our first assignment. For each sound I design, I try to follow these three shuns. Collection, iteration, consolidation. Instead of just finding a sample and dropping it into my audio editing program of choice, I like to start the design process by combing through my library and making a temporary sample back. We're making a server room ambience, so I'll search my library for things like hum, beep, server, drone, air vent, and throw everything I like from that search into our new folder. So for example, I might choose a sound like this, but I'd pass on something like this. Cause it's just not futuristic and doesn't really fit with my idea of what this room would sound like. This step is not only fun, but it will give us a huge advantage when we start designing because now later if we need a futuristic hum sound to use, we already have one right here waiting for us and we don't have to interrupt the creative flow to go searching for something in an endless maze of computer folders. Sometimes this thing happens where you know you've collected a bunch of cool samples to work with, but five minutes into the design you feel like you're making the worst sound you've ever made in your life. Here's what I do to get around that. Take your design and duplicate it, then mute the old one and then try to redesign the sound completely. Then after another five minutes or so, compare your new design to your old one. Keep the version that you like more and delete the other one. Then repeat this process again and again, refining more carefully each time until you have something that you like. Really, what's happening psychologically by having the old version safe and tucked away is that you free your mind up to be more drastic and creative with your changes without fear of losing work. This really helps me get out of my own head a lot when I'm tired or having a hard time getting the creative juices flowing. This is one of the hardest parts, but it pays off, trust me. After iterating and completing your first version of a sound, export it and put it on a new track without any effects at all. By doing this, we've now forced ourselves to really commit to the design and avoid tinkering and tweaking tiny settings for hours, which can be so unproductive to get sucked into. Anyone who does creative work has been there before. If you give yourself the choice to go back and constantly tweak something, it breeds more indecision. I've heard this mode of thinking referred to as rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. The consolidation step removes that choice. If later when you hear the sound again with fresh ears, you decide to go back and tweak it, go do it. But you're almost never in the right mindset to make those calls right after you finish something. You have to give yourself some time. Anyway, after following all of these steps, here's the sound that I came up with for version one of the ambience in the server room. Hey, I heard your new server sound in the game. That was the worst sound I've ever heard. Do it again, and this time do it less futuristic. What are you talking? What are you talking about? Excuse me. You said you said you wanted to be futuristic. Just do what I say. No questions. Thank no, you. What, no question. What do you mean no question? Goodbye. <sighs> Getting feedback and having to redesign stuff in the game industry is super common, and this method lets us deal with that very easily. We can go back and take a look at the samples we chose, make some changes, iterate, redesign, etc all while constantly improving the sound and with a clear understanding of what the trajectory is. Anyway, this is the method I've been using for making the sounds in waveform lately. Give it a shot and let me know how it works for you. Also, I just have to thank you guys for the incredible support that waveform has gotten on Patreon. It means the world to me and it really gets me motivated to make this show in the little free time that I have. So thank you very much for that. If you'd like to support the channel, we have some great reward tiers going on. The link will be in the description. But as always, these videos will be free and the Patreon is completely optional. There are tons of other ways you can support the channel that are just as valuable, like sharing the videos with your friends. But before we wrap up this video today, I'd like to talk about a new plugin called Weaponizer. 
sometimes I'm sent a plug-in from a company for review on this channel and I almost never want to do it because I feel like it's not the kind of stuff that you guys tune in for and frankly most of the plugins that I receive I would never use myself. But this is a bit of an exception. Krotos has developed Weaponizer as a sort of one-stop gun design plugin. It allows you to carefully tweak and affect each layer in a gun sound and then audition the sound as a single shot or in burst mode. You can use your own gun samples or pick from tons of extremely high quality samples that they provide with the plugin. Each time you fire it, it will randomize the samples from a bank that you choose, so it's extremely cool for developing a gun sound and giving it tons of variety and detail without much work. There are tons of really cool convenient tools that you can use in this plugin just to get an idea out quickly, and I've really enjoyed using it at home for the last few weeks. I highly recommend checking it out. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.